In today's video, we will learn about density and pressure. We see that any object that has composition has density. And we measure density as taking the mass of the object and dividing it by its volume, which is expressed in the units of kilograms per meter cubed. We can also measure the specific gravity of an object, which is the ratio of the object's density to the density of water. We also have pressure, which is the magnitude of a force exerted perpendicular to a given surface of area. So we can calculate pressure as being the force divided by the area that it acts on. And the units that we measure pressure in is pascals. If we look to the figure to the right, we can we see that each cube has the same volume. However, since each cube is made up of different material, the cube's densities will differ. Because of the different densities of the cubes, the mass of each cube will also differ, which we see is illustrated in the figure. In our first example, we see an object weighs 450 newtons and has a volume of 0.083 meters cubed. And we're asked to find the density of the object. So we know that the force is equal to 450 newtons and the object has a volume of 0 0.083 meters cubed and we're asked to find the density of the object. We know density is defined as mass divided by volume. Our volume is given to us, however, we have to figure out our mass from the information they gave us about the weight of the object. So we know that force is equal to mass times gravity. And if we plug in our value of 450 newtons for our force and we divide both sides by gravity, which is a value of 9.8, we can get the mass of our object. Now, if we plug in the mass of our object into our equation, we can solve for our density. So we see that the mass of the object is equal to 450 newtons divided by 9.8 divided by the volume of the object, which was 0 0.083 meters cubed. And if we calculate this out, we see that the density of the object will be equal to 500 and 53 kilograms per meter cubed. In our second example, we're asked, what is the downward force on the top of the head due to atmospheric pressure? Assume that the top of your head is a flat circle with a diameter of 20 centimeters. So at atmospheric pressure, we have one ATM times, times normal atmospheric pressure of 1.013 times 10 to the fifth pascals and that the diameter of the head is 20 centimeters which if we divide by 2 we will get the radius of the head which will be 10.0 centimeters. So we know that pressure is equal to force over area. So we're given our pressure and we can calculate the area of a circle given the radius to solve for the force. But first if we rearrange the equation we see that force is equal to our pressure times our area. So our pressure we see was 1 atm times our, atmos our normal atmospheric pressure of 1.013 times 10 to the fifth pascals multiplied by the area of a circle which is pi times our radius squared which we have to convert our radius into meters so our radius is 0 0.1 meters squared times pi times our normal atmospheric pressure will give us a force equal to 3,100 
and 82 newtons acting downward on the top of your head. When a fluid is at rest in a container, all portions of the fluid must be in static equilibrium. Also, all points at the same depth must be at the same pressure. So when an object is submerged, we have three external forces acting on the object. Them being the force of gravity, a downward force exerted by the fluid above it, and an upward force exerted by the liquid below it. And so we can express this in the equation of pressure acting in an upward force is equal to the pressure acting in a downward force plus the density of the fluid multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity times the displacement in the y direction. So we see that pressure can be found at any depth below the surface of the water where we can take the pressure exerted on the object is equal to our atmospheric pressure plus the density of the water times our acceleration due to gravity times the depth that the object is submerged. And we see that P0 symbolizes normal atmospheric pressure, which is a constant of 1.013 times 10 to the fifth Pascals. And we see that this supports Pascal's principle, which states that a change in pressure applied to an enclosed fluid is transmitted undiminished to every point of the fluid and to the wall of the container. So let's see how we can apply these equations to the example we're given. And her example states that a piston, labeled number one in the figure, has a diameter of 0 0.25 inches, and piston two has a diameter of 1.5 inches. In the absence of friction, determine the force necessary to support the 500 pound weight. First, if we list the information we're given, so we see that the diameter of the first piston is equal to 0 0.25 inches. Or we can say its radius is equal to 0 0.125 inches. And that the diameter of piston 2 is 1.5 inches or has a radius of 0 0.75 inches. And we're asked to solve for the force necessary to support the 500 pound weight. So given our equation, we know that P2 is equal to P1 plus the density of water times gravity times our change in our y displacement. Since we're trying to maintain the height of the object, our displacement will be zero, making this side of our equation equal to zero. So we're left with the pressure and two is equal to the pressure of one. And we know that pressure is also equal to force over area. So we see we'll have the force exerted on piston two over the area of piston two is equal to the force exerted on piston one divided by the area of piston one. So we can rearrange our equation to solve for the force that is acting on piston one, which will give us the equation that a force of piston two times the area of piston one divided by the area of piston two will give us the force exerted on piston one. So if we plug in the values given, we see that the force exerted on piston 2 was 500 pounds and that the area of the piston, which is a circle, will be pi times its radius, which is 0 0.125 squared, divided by the area of piston 2, which is pi times its radius of 0 0.75 squared. We see that the pi's will cancel out and we can calculate the force exerted on piston 1, which we see is about 13.89 newtons 
or about 14 newtons. And since we see that the system is in equilibrium, we know that the net torque act on the system must be equal to zero. So we see that we will have a force pushing up by the fluid on piston one and a force pushing down by the lever keep the 500 pound in equilibrium. So we see that torque is the same as force times a radius acting up on piston one. So we'll label this as one minus the force exerted downwards for piston two. So we'll have the force of two times the length of our lever, which is equal to zero. So we figured out the force exerted at the piston one is 13.89 newtons, which has a radius of two inches minus the force of object two times its radius of two inches plus 10 inches, which will give us 12 inches. And so when we solve for force that's needed to keep or to support the 500 weight will be 2.3 pounds of force.